So I'm actually currently in Alabama in my childhood home where I had my first ever paranormal experience. My sister bought the house from my parents and is currently in the process of renovating it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you back to the bedroom and show you where the old closet used to be that uh, opened up on me one night when I was sleeping. And that's where I heard the voice. So ignore the mess, but this was my old bedroom. My sister, like I said, is renovating the place. My bed was right here, feet here, head there. This used to be the closet. As you can see, it's no longer a closet. My sister ripped it out. She's gonna turn it into an office space. There was a French door here that had a latch lock. That would open up. And that night that it happened, my feet were right here. And I felt the tugging on the blanket. And that's when I heard the, what I can only describe as inhuman voice say my name. I don't even really honestly like being back in this room. Like this, standing by this closet, it's eerie to me. Well, and you know it's no longer a closet, it just feels eerie. But not often you get to come back to the place where you experienced your first time ever having a paranormal experience. So I just thought I would share that with you guys because it was a monumental turning point in what I do. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the uh, little tiny tour here. I'm not gonna give you a tour of the whole house because like I said, she's renovating, it's, there's stuff going on. But yeah, so bed was right here. Closet door was right there. And yeah, like being back in this room, it's honestly kind of uncomfortable. So this is a little bit different setup than what we had when I was living here, but this was the dining room. Here would have been the dining room table. Over here, there was an end table that had a shelf on it. It was close to the floor and a lamp. Now, the night that I kicked my dog out of the room when she passed away, if you've ever listened to my story, you know that uh, it was on the shelf of that end table that we found her curled up in a ball dead the next morning. And uh, about a week after that was when I heard the voice and then everything just kind of went to hell. So as I've described in my story before, you know, um, after I heard the voice say my name, I would wake up with constant nightmares. And one of the nightmares was me leaving my bedroom and going down a long hallway. So this hallway is not really long, but it's almost like in the dream, the hallway just seemed to expand. It's like never ended. And when I would get to what I guess could best describe as a garage door, um, I, it seemed like a lot further in the dream. Instead of it being a house, it would open up in the woods and I would be being stared down by four or five wolves that had like blood red eyes that were glowing. And they would attack me and pretty much rip me to pieces. So, yeah. I mean, I'm happy my sister bought, bought the home and she's renovating it because it was her childhood home too. But I'm not gonna lie, being here is almost uncomfortable just because of what I've experienced. But we were in town and I kind of felt like I had to come back. I had to come and you know, do this. I walked into the closet, or what used to be the closet earlier, and it's just like the feeling in there is very difficult to describe. So as you can see here, this is where my parents' closet on their bedroom would have ended. This spot right here is where my closet was. And I still kind of feel like the energy in that space is not something that I like being around. It's kind of like a unique tour of my first ever first-hand paranormal experience. I mean, she's doing a great job with the place, but just being back in here, like I said, it's a little bit uncomfortable almost.